It was him. All along, it was just him playing with my mind. And I let it happen. When we first arrived here, it didn't take us long to figure out that we'd been drawn in as playthings by something powerful. A devil, they called him. And still, I underestimated him. I didn't realize that my mind was what he was playing with, rather than my body. The omnipotent Count Strahd, he's not all-knowing, not by any standards, and yet, every time I felt that tickling sensation, every time I dreamt I let him see through my eyes and play on my emotions. My father and mother has nothing to do with any of this, it was all just between me and him. Was he the one who kept me alive through my fall? All just to see if he could trick me one last time and make me turn on this single-minded priest that has become my good companion. And what will he do now that the charade has finally ended? This is Red Moon Roleplay. The storm outside rages as you ready your weapons for battle. The time to face the devil has come. Roll initiative. Seventeen. Five. Strahd stands firm by his smouldering wreckage of a throne. His two dire wolf beasts snarl. Their eyes blood red as they get ready to pounce onto you. Strahd looks to you, Roshek, smiles, and vanishes from sight. I uh, stagger back at this. I feel confused. All those voices, all those dreams, was it all fake? Me throwing that wooden amulets on the ground because the mirror told me so. What was that for? And I feel less prepared than I'd wanted. I'll not hesitate, but I already did. Where did he go? I shout out. Roman, it is your turn. Strahd has vanished. His two wolves are ready to pounce. What do you do? I, I briefly look around. But realizing that there is really no time to spare, and these wolves are a threat, I close my eyes and I, I pray the now familiar prayer to Lathander, and I unleash my guiding bolt upon one of the dire wolves. Roll your attack. A natural twenty. That is a critical hit. Double up your damage. Thirty-eight damage. Roman, you recite the spell, and from your hand bursts forth bolts of holy light. They are so large that as they fly forward into this dire wolf, he is blown to pieces. His blood, his fur, his bones splattering all across the chamber, some of it even getting on the other wolf who howls in dismay. You have completely annihilated this beast. Show yourself, Count. You cannot hide from us forever. And I, I look around. I try to... I try to see where could he have gone. I... I back away. 
of knowing the kind of magics that he possesses. We have met before, after all. How exactly do you back away? You've got the doors straight behind you, that's five feet away, and then this chamber. And then I shall move out to the left. How far? Twenty feet. Yes, you quickly look to Roshek, and then just start sidestepping to the left, taking yourself a little away from Roshek. You are by yourself now, but at the same time, quite far away from the wolf, and behind you, very close to the walls. At this point, the remaining wolf looks a bit confused and growls in anger before charging straight at Roshek. I look at the priest, first wide-eyed at his immense power all of a sudden. Uh, I feel a bit taken aback and I raise my shield for the incoming attack. And the wolf rebounds straight off your shield, his pounce completely caught off guard by your sudden shield stance. It's your turn. What do you do? I uh, keep an eye on the wolf, but I try to look around. I use my action to increase the light of the sword. Maybe that will reveal where he is. Indeed, and your sword begins to glow just a little more. The radius of light now going from five feet to ten feet all around you. It's at this point you hear a banging coming from behind, and the two doors behind you burst open. A very bedraggled-looking Van Richten and Esmeralda enter the fray. Van Richten looks around. (sighs) We, We came as quick as we could. What's going on? What's the situation? He's just disappeared from sight. And this is one of his pets remaining. That's all we see for now. Indeed. Esmeralda immediately notices you're in trouble, Roshek, and runs to your side, running her weapon, hopefully through this dire wolf. She darts forward with her rapier, which the wolf manages to duck out of the way just in time, but then she withdraws her silver short sword. The dire wolf looks concerned for a moment before being struck solidly in the haunches twice. The wolf seems to be trying to retreat a little, but you, Roshek, notice a sound coming just from your right. You look up. You can't see anything, but you can hear someone chuckling under their breath and saying something. Suddenly, You see a giant bolt of fire cascading straight towards you, Esmeralda, and Van Richten. Roman, they are going to be engulfed in flame, but you luckily have just sidestepped away enough that you don't think you will be involved in this attack. Roshik, you ready yourself for impact. Make a dexterity saving throw. I try to raise my shield in time to glance off the fire. Twenty-three. And you raise your shield, hiding behind it fully. You pass. You only take half damage from this fireball as it engulfs the entire area around you in a 20-foot radius. Yes, and as I have learned to use my shield with a shield mastery feat, I manage to avoid the harm completely. Indeed, you do. Completely managing to cover yourself from this bout of fire. Esmeralda, unfortunately, does not have a shield, and you hear her shriek in pain as the fire burns at her skin and clothing. Curse you, Strahd, for your cowardice and sneak attacks. Come out into the light. You hear no response other than Van Richten as well, stumbling near you. Roman, he too, has taken a giant burn to the side of his face. He is stumbling and bleeding heavily. You also notice, Roshek, in front of you, the charred remains of the direwolf, long now incinerated. Roman, it is your turn. What do you do? So I see that uh, Van Richten is in, in a pretty bad state. Yes, he is in need of healing. Correct. He's still on his feet, but he doesn't look good. Esmeralda doesn't look very good either, but she seems to be at least standing a bit more heartily than him. He, after all, was already injured. 
Yes. Then I shall cast Cure Wounds. And seeing Van Richten in trouble, this man who possesses so much knowledge and, and so much power, he is an ally that we will need in order to be able to vanquish this foe. I reach out my hand towards him and uh, offer him the healing light of Lathander. And I restore 23 hit points. And you see the burns on the side of his face fade just a little, at least. He takes in a ragged breath and looks to you. My thanks, priest. We must be alert. We cannot see him, but he is here. Try and listen for him. Indeed, indeed, he, he is here. We will find him. Best you move away from me. He has those fireballs that he's casting. We must not remain close to each other, I say, and I yet again move, trying to ensure that I keep a safe distance from the others. I do not want any one of us to make a prime target. Where do you move? Do you move forwards, which will take you further into the room, or more to your left, which will, in five feet, you'll be straight with a wall to your back? Hmm, then I shall go forward into the room. I do wish to have some space to move. Being cornered is rarely a good thing. Do you move your full 30 feet? Yes. Very good, very good. You stride forwards, looking around you. Now that the wolves are dead, silence seems to have returned, other than, of course, the sounds of the storm outside. Esmeralda is looking rather perturbed, but she still stands, and Van Richten gives her a nod of affirmation. Roshek, it is your turn, and your sword is now glowing brightly around you at least ten feet. You do not see any foes, but can you hear something? Maybe sense something? It's hard to tell. Not being able to use my dark vision, I twitch around and look about, obviously still shaken by the taunts and the mind games of all this that has been going on for such a long time now. How long has it been that we've been here? And I look around, what was that sound? And I, I flail about my sword as a man lost in a cavern waving his torch about and I try to continue to pour my focus into it and increase my light while looking around and also making distance from the others. Indeed, and you advance forward slowly, your sword lighting up even more. Now 15 feet of light coming from it. Esmeralda sticks close but not too close. She nods towards Van Richten and remarks, Yes, we must try and keep distance from each other. It will be difficult, but we must. She quickly chugs a vial of something from her belt. It looks like she only has one of them. Perhaps it's some sort of healing potion because she does suddenly look a little better. Both Van Richten and Esmeralda are looking quite bedraggled after that flaming attack. But they are back on their feet, at least. Meanwhile... Van Richten looks to you, Roman, and then he looks to Esmeralda. He frowns to himself as if thinking, I will wait, I will wait. He takes out his sword cane, the old walking stick that actually hides at the bottom a sharp silvered blade, and he just sort of stays where he is, getting ready, waiting. You don't have to wait long though, Roman. Because as you stride forward, you see the light coming from Roshek's blade, slowly filling up more and more of the room, but you're not quite near that. And suddenly you feel a presence right next to you, and a whisper in your ear. Good evening, priest. And as you feel this force coming towards you, you're not entirely sure what happens, but you just instinctively raise your shield and feel blows rain down into your shield. One, two, your shield is practically dented from the impact. But you are fine. 
somehow you've just about managed to hold your shield in the right place that these dents haven't actually got to you, even though your shield is getting battered by the assault. It is your turn. What do you do? Uh, I I feel these blows. Do I see him? Is he standing right next to me? Nothing is standing in front of you. This is almost like the wind is attacking you. No, no, not the wind. That is, that is not possible. I must dispel this magic. Uh, we must be able to see him. And I cast and dispel magic, trying to reveal this foe that we are facing. And you cast your aura of dispelling magic and immediately see the Count appear right in front of you, his face one of fury as you reveal him. There you are. You cannot hide anymore. And, uh, I'm standing right next to him. Am I able to sort of withdraw from him in some way without invoking some kind of attack of opportunity? No, he is right in front of you. In order to move away from him, you will have to disengage, and unfortunately you've already used an action to cast a spell. Right, then I shall just remain where I am, keeping my, my shield at the ready. And in response to this, he moves to strike you in the face with his hand. But again, you duck out of the way. You're not sure what's going on, but your adrenaline has kicked in and you were somehow avoiding these blows, even though they're coming so quick. It is now Roshek's turn. Roman is in melee combat with the Count. What do you do? I swing about at the sudden noises of the blows on the shield. I see the spell being cast and the Count being revealed. I let out a battle cry and I charge towards them. Indeed you do and your sword glows bright with holy radiance and you are upon the Count. What do you do? He turns to face you. I launch myself in with a launching attack. Roll. I roll 22. That's a hit. Roll damage. 19 damage. You charge forward into the Count and swing your sword into his side, just about catching him by the cape. Your sword goes straight through his back. He growls in frustration, but seems to take the blow, at least to the point where you haven't finished him yet. And I try to strike again. 15. This time, though, you miss as he sort of sidesteps out of the way of your blade. I try to follow up and swing my shield at him, trying to knock him off his feet. Roll. And, uh, my roll is 27. And you surge forward and smash him down to the ground. You raise your sword to bring it down upon him. But in seconds, he suddenly comes up from the ground and is back on his feet. And as my sword comes down, hitting nothing on the ground, I try to ready myself for whatever comes next, and I end my turn. Indeed, and as you do, the Count snarls at you. You see a shimmering about his person. You smell something burning, and then he retreats. You move forward to parry a blow at him, but he's too fast even for you, and he manages to get out of your engagement range, instead moving straight towards the walls. He then takes a few steps back and begins to walk up the wall, finding himself now at least 20 feet out of your melee range. Ugh. Tricks and games. And I look at Roman, seeing that he's unsaved, almost raising an eyebrow at this. How did he become such a quick fighter? How are you feeling, Roman? You are aware that you somehow avoided an invisible foe's blows, almost by luck and good shield skill. I can scarcely believe it, but it just and reinforces my belief that I am indeed here on a holy mission from Lathander, and he is protecting me. His glory, it reaches even into this darkness. Yes, we will be triumphant today. Indeed. Van Richten moves around behind you both. He is keeping some distance, but shouts encouragement. Yes, that's right, Roshek. Use the blade. He will be afraid of the light. And Esmeralda quickly comes, again not getting too close, 
but just keeping enough distance between her and the Count as she summons forth a spell. Lightning then streaks from her hands towards the Count. Unfortunately, he does manage to duck out of the way, although a little bit of the lightning still singes at his legs. Strahd looks down at both of you, Roman and Roshik. He snarls as he raises his hand, and once again you see a glowing ball of fire start to emerge. He remarks, You got lucky once. Let us see if your luck holds. And again, this time a fireball comes straight down on you, Roman and you, Roshik, you must both make dexterity saves. And my eyes widen at this quick casting of a spell. I just rolled nine now. I'm going to use my indomitable and try to get another better roll. I am still caught up in the, the rush of um, the success I have been seeming to have. Um, probably not... Focused enough on my foe, I roll a two. And now with the uh, indomitable, I roll a, I roll twenty-three. Roshek, you once again brace yourself behind your shield. For a moment, you feel like your position is off, but you force yourself forwards, willing your body into position, and again you are able to completely withstand this damage. Roman, you are not so lucky. You perhaps a standing still a bit dumbstruck from those blows from before and you were struck straight for 21 fire damage uh, I scream but it's a good wake up call this is not a fight to be taken lightly indeed and once again the count quickly moves away moving left along the wall 30 feet mainly in the direction where he'll be nearer Esmeralda rather than yourself, Roshek. It is, however, your turn. What do you do? The Count is scaling the wall. He's a good 20 feet up. Your light just about can reach him, but you yourself wouldn't be able to swing your sword at him. I uh, look at the glow in the room, feeling triumphant and uh, drawing in the... uh, smoke from my smouldering shield, feeling the heat permeating to my arm. And I raise up the sword towards him and I extend the light to 20 feet. Indeed, and now 20 feet of light illuminate you all around. As this happens, he moves once again, quickly moving towards Esmeralda. She blinks a little at the sudden speed of him advancing. What do you do? I, uh, I move towards her to, uh, get within some sort of protective range. And I shout, How do you like it? The light of your brother's sword, the light of Sergei's sword. And you are able to just about move to Esmeralda's aura, if you will, and have her in your light, even though you cannot get to the Count right now. He is about to be upon her, though. He moves forward. He raises a hand just a little to shield himself from your light. And he hisses, The sword did not help my brother. And in the end, it shall not help you. Esmeralda responds to this by swearing, Do not underestimate me, fiend. She draws her weapons and moves to engage him. And she charges forward, slashing at his side, first with her rapier, and then twice with her silver short sword. She misses once, but gets two hits in, slashing at his flesh. He winces in anger at this display. Van Richten, meanwhile, keeps his distance, but starts coming a little closer to you, Roman, perhaps ready to assist you if needed. Strahd lets out a angry yowl of pain as he sizzles in the light of your sword, Roshek. And I hold up the sword towards him, not deigning him with a reply, but clearly seeing the effects of it. And he looks at you with a feral look. You suddenly see for a moment the face of the man gone. This is not the face of a man. His teeth are elongated. His eyes dark and hollow, his very jaw and face contorted, 
This is a beast you now face. And rather than retreating from you, he charges straight into you. Despite the sizzling, despite the pain he's in, remarking, If you think I am afraid of your light, you are mistaken. And he moves to strike. At first, you perhaps aren't expecting much, and so you only raise your shield a little. After all, he's attacking you unarmed. But then his hand almost goes straight through your shield, as if made of solid iron. It smashes directly into your side. He then follows with a swipe at your face with his claws. You take 44 damage. Some of it mere piercing damage, but also some of it seeming to burn into your skin. The claw marks across your face especially feel as if there is something in them burning in your very blood. Oof. I let out a large groan and uh, I wince at the sudden attack n near my eyes and I lick my lips and I feel the blood pouring down. Roman, it is your turn. The Count has charged Roshik dead on even though he is burning in this light. His power is not diminished. He has actually gotten past Roshik's guard. You can only imagine how bad it would have been for you if you hadn't been able to defend yourself so quickly. What do you do? I go down on one knee, and I must call Lathander here more directly, and I offer up a beacon of hope for all of my allies here, and I cast the spell with that name. And from now on, each of us has advantage on wisdom saving throws and death saving throws, and regains maximum number of hit points possible from any healing. Am I... In very close proximity with uh, Van Richten, or...? You're closer to Van Richten than Roshek. Let's say maybe 20 feet away from the Count and Roshek, but maybe only 5-10 feet from Van Richten now. Um, then I shall move a little bit away from Van Richten. Let us keep some distance, yes? I say to him, mm, do not want to invite a fireball. And you move closer to Van Richten trying to keep some distance. However, the Count then looks to you from his fight, and once again shifts away from Roshek. Roshek, you swing, but you can't quite catch him, and again he's 30 feet away from you, just out of the range of your 20 feet light now. Moving in the direction, not entirely towards you, Roman, but trying to keep to your side, moving back onto the wall. <sighs> Roshek, it is your turn. What do you do? Uh, I raise my blade from where the Count just stood, and I, I twist about towards him. I, I, is he within range of me moving and attacking? No. Once again, he's taken to the wall. You can shine the light at him, but you won't be able to swing your sword directly. Uh, I, uh... I do that, then. I, uh... I hold up the blade towards him once again and I extend the light, pouring more focus and concentration into it. And uh, as a bonus action, I use my second wind to try and regain a few hit points. Indeed you do, and you move forward, extending the light even further. He frowns, retreating almost all the way to the back of the chamber, keeping to the wall above. Esmeralda looks a little concerned. She looks behind her and towards the window. She seems concerned about something she can see outside. She then looks forwards and once again tries to fire a bolt of lightning at the count. This time it hits. At least you think it does, but suddenly once again he seems to blur almost out of vision and reappear somewhere else. I feel a tinge of despair. Well, we made him lose his facade. Surely it's because he's losing his power. Meanwhile, Van Richten seems to take this moment to very carefully run to your side. Roman, he mutters something under his breath and places a hand on your shoulder. You feel a ward come over you. You are familiar with this sensation. A death ward. He remarks, hopefully it won't be needed, but just in case. I pray for that. Let us all pray for that. Thank you, my friend. 
and the Count once again moves all the way directly in front of you now, to the very back of the wall. He looks at you, he looks at Van Richten, and smiles as he raises his hand one more time to unleash a ball of fire towards you and Van Richten, Roman. Roll me a reflex saving throw. Seven. And once again, you are engulfed in flame and fire, taking 25 fire damage, Roman. Van Richten winces as he practically falls to the ground. He's just about standing, but once again, the burns you've just healed are fresh. How are you? Uh, I am not good. Not good at all. This is very concerning. I must do something about this. It is your turn. Then, seeing as how we are all starting to feel mm, the effects of the power that the Count has, I unleash the most powerful healing that Lethander can offer me at this point, and I cast Mass Cure Wounds, and with the Beacon of Hope active at the same time, this will reward all of us with 28 hit points back. And blue light extends throughout the room and invigorates you with the holy light of Lathander. Uh, and uh, I see my wounds close and I feel the lessening of the burning sensation that I just had. And I feel hope coming back. The desperation is fading away. The old Count is still wounded, but we are getting back. You see the Count frown, and once again charge forwards, moving quickly, swiftly, straight towards Roman. It is your turn, Roshek, but just before your turn begins, roll me a perception check. Fifteen. You hear a tapping sound. You look to your right, and you are just able to see bats. Hundreds of bats suddenly at the stained glass window. Before you can even register how quickly they've arrived, they smash through the window. Glass, rain and wind coming in with them. They fly, moving forwards almost like a mass straight in front of you for a moment, separating you and Esmeralda from Roman and Van Richten. What do you do? Nah. I, uh, my instinct is to flail about, but I still want to try and make it through them to where I last saw the Count. To muscle your way through, you're going to have to make an athletics check. <sighs> That's eleven. You begin to move forward, but suddenly you just are surrounded by the flapping of leathery wings and small faces biting at you. Alone, they are not much, but they are representing an obstacle right now, and unfortunately you find yourself stopping as you begin to try and ward them off. You can't move any further, but what do you do with your action? I try to slice at any that I can get to with the blade. Indeed, and you slice through them, your holy light radiating out. It seems for a moment the bats were able to sort of submerge you in darkness, if only for a few seconds, but now the light is clearly starting to affect them, and they are beginning to disperse around you. You will soon be able to move again, but for now, you must deal with these bats. But you are getting rid of them. Esmeralda comes to your side and again swings with you, and the bats are slowly being dispatched, some of them falling to her blade, some not. It's at this point, Roman, that the Count, once again, is right in front of you. You look behind you and see Roshek, Esmeralda are on their way, but they've been waylaid by this mass of vampiric bats. And he takes a swing at you. And I try to raise my shield to guard myself. Perhaps Lathander will be with me again. And you just about raise your shield, but he just about manages to get a blow through and scratch at your face much like Roshek with his tannin-like claws. Take 22 damage. And I scream with the pain. Hearing your scream over the noise and the bats, I shout out, I'm coming, Roman! At this, Van Richten, filled with his own rage, draws his cane and charges to aid you, 
Roman. He yells at the top of his voice. Even if I die, beast, you, I will end you. And he moves forward with surprising grace despite his injury and aims his wooden cane straight at the Count's heart. It just misses, however, instead going straight through the Count. He withdraws the sword cane. The Count does give a grimace of pain. Van Richten, you truly are a pest. And with this, he turns to face Van Richten and swings forwards at him. It is his turn. And as he moves forwards, he literally moves his hand in such a way not to strike at his face, but rather to hurl his arm directly into Van Richten, and Van Richten flies across the floor at least ten feet, clattering through into the bats. At this he looks to you, Roman, grins ferrily, blood starting to pour from his mouth as he strikes at you with his second attack. And again, his hand comes down hard on you, dealing you 24 damage. Oh, I am barely alive. I spit blood, but I am still somehow alive. It must be, it must be Lathander. Just a little more, just a little more. It's your turn. You are in pain, confused, but the Count is right in front of you. What do you do? I must regain my strength. I cast Cure Wounds on myself on level 4, and I bring back 36 hit points. And I see my wounds closing, and I smirk a little at the Count. Your power is nothing against the power of the Morning Lord, I say with a commanding voice. The Count tilts his head and roars at you in rage. Your god has no command here. And he reaches forward his hand to try and grasp at your throat. But he just misses. You manage to sort of sidestep out of the way. He howls in frustration. Roshek, it is your turn. The bats are starting to clear. You can see the Count ahead of you. Van Richten has been cast aside. Roman is somehow standing, a glow of holy light about him. What do you do? Seeing the clearing in the bats, I take the chance to charge through and lunge towards the Count. And your glowing light enables you to reach him, and you are at an attack range. What do you do? I do my lunging attack. I roll a 22. That's a hit. Roll damage. 18. And you stride forward and your blade goes once more straight through his side. Black blood pouring from him. He howls like a wounded beast. But he still does not look cowed. He is not afraid of anything. He is just more and more angry. What do you do next? I try a fainting attack. Doing something that he's not expecting as I twirl around. And I roll 21. Yes, you, your feint is successful. You dart to the side suddenly and he's caught off guard. What do you do? I bring my blade into him and I do 22 points of damage to him. You slash at his side, just catching him in the arm, a deep gash forming. He growls in pain and frustration. What do you do? Feeling that victory is coming closer, I... I swing about to follow up with one more attack using my action surge. I roll 30. That's a hit. And uh, I use a trip attack, trying to once again knock him over, but this time using the blade and a kick. I deal 28 damage and the uh, difficulty is 16. And you move forward and drive your Sword of Light directly into his chest. He howls, he clutches at you in the blade, and you just feel this radiating heat coming off you. His skin begins to flay. He tilts his head. He simply remarks, Very well. 
come for me. And he drifts away from you, drifts away from the injury, drifts away into the wall and turns into mist. And you see the mist just starting to retreat into the ground below you. And I retract my sword. What? What does that mean? Van Richten sort of stumbles up from the ground. Esmeralda takes a deep breath. She looks around frantically. Where's he gone, Van Richten? Has he gone? Van Richten sort of sways a little, comes to Roman. He has gone to his tomb. Well done. We have done it. We have driven him to seek out his only refuge. Somewhere down below. Come to the catacombs. We must... We must... Uh, Van Richten kind of stumbles a little. Careful there, friend. You are injured. Let me... Let me help you. And let me help all of us. And, um... I begin casting Cure Wounds. And I heal 12 hit points to myself, to Van Richten. And Esmeralda, is she in bad shape, or is she good? She looks not too bad. Definitely bleeding from a few little wounds. The bats seem to have given her a few scratches. All right, well then I shall give two of these uh, level one spells to Van Richten, giving him 24 points back and myself 12. You all take in a few deep breaths. The bats are still present, but they are now kind of clambering around the ceiling, just sort of flapping about, as it were. Some of them already going back outside. The storm and thunder from outside have increased in intensity. Van Richten looks down. He looks grateful for your healing. He seems to get his strength back. But he notices something. None of you really noticed because of the heat of the battle. But there was a carpet in front of the throne. A carpet made of the skin of a saber-toothed tiger. A white one. I see. Uh, I follow his glance and I see it and... Well, we have to move on to the catacombs, like you said. Van Richten nods, quickly remarking mostly to himself. I am sorry, Mishka. You are a loyal friend. And he gets up and looks toward the wall where Strahd sort of vanished. Roll me a perception check, everyone. Eight. Twenty-four. Roshek, you are perhaps distracted by battle, but Roman, you... Take a moment to look at the wall. You're pretty sure you can see a bit of an outline. Like a door outline. It's very hard to see, but you can see it. There's definitely a door in the wall. Very well hidden, but visible now. You can see its outline. Look there, friends. There's uh, an opening there. It must lead somewhere important if it is in his throne room. Perhaps it is a way to get to his resting chamber. Perhaps it will lead us to where we need to go. I start moving towards it. I twist about as he says that, and I move towards it as well. Indeed, Esmeralda moves to follow, Van Richten behind, and then he just pauses. You hear a sound coming from the other end of the hall. Something thudding. Bush. Whoosh. Whoosh. Roshik, you notice as well, coming from the broken window. Movement. Scuttling. The sounds of laughter and shrieking. You can see in the dark, figures are starting to crawl in from outside. You all take a moment to stand as you see the doors to the chamber burst open. You are no longer alone. Standing at the entrance to the throne room is a giant, armoured individual. Perhaps not giant. Maybe just a very large man carrying a giant great sword. When you look up, though, Roshek, to see who this is, there is no head. Or rather, there is no one in the armour. And yet, the suit of armor is clanking forwards. Meanwhile, Roman, you notice to the left the familiar faces now in the lightning. The clergy, who you met just 
hours ago, crawling in from outside. You also notice coming from behind the suit of armor, more whites, more skeletons, and three more figures, three women. One is dressed in a fine gown, long blonde hair cascading down her shoulders, moving quite gracefully along the floor. Another is ebony skinned, tougher looking, strong. She carries two long swords. Her third woman has a weird, mysterious look about her. You've never quite seen it, but you, Roshek, might be familiar with the land of Kalimshai. All three of these women grin, bearing their fangs. What do you all do? Van Richten takes one look at all this, one look at all of you, and simply says, Run. Run now! Yes, we must go. And uh, we're just opening in the wall this door. Is there any way to get into it? This, this path it must be the way out. Yes, by pushing forward, you will literally be in a hallway outside this room. Yes, and then that is what I shall do. I usher them all to get through and make sure I close the door as firmly as I can behind me. You are about to go through and Esmeralda gives you a nod, stops and turns to step towards Van Richten. She remarks to both of you, yes, we will buy you time. At this, Van Richten very quickly goes, no child, no, you go with them. Esmeralda goes, what? I am not going to leave you, Van Richten. Yes, you will, child. Go with them now. Esmeralda is clearly conflicted. What do you two do? I grab her arm and tries to get her through the door. There's no time. Esmeralda, there is, there is still a life to live. Do not throw it away here. We will destroy the Count, but there is no point in throwing your life away. Not, not now, not, not here. Come with us, we need you. Roman, roll me a persuasion check. Twenty. She grits her teeth as Roshek tries to handle her and sort of withdraws from him. And she sort of pauses and looks to you, Roman. Looks to Van Richten. She remarks quickly, Van Richten, you can come with us too. You don't need to make a final stand. Van Richten gets his sword stance ready and simply remarks, It has been an honor, my child, but I cannot give you any more aid. The curse could claim you all now. Farewell. Go. We will carry your legacy, Rudolf, I say, and I start heading down the stairs. Yes, I nod to Van Richten and quickly start moving down. We must go. Go. Esmeralda lets out a very pained sigh and turns and comes with you down the stairs. As you begin moving down the stairs, you very quickly hear the sounds of battle behind you. Yet they are not quick sounds of battle. Perhaps the vampire hunter is truly making a final stand. You, meanwhile, heading down the hallway, see a long stretch to the north, and far more interesting, stairs, spiral stairs, going up and going down directly to the south. I assume you head for the stairs. Indeed we do. We must get to where he went. We will visit him where he rests. I, uh, remark, the wards that he made must have faded. That's probably why they all come at once now. That suit of armour looked like the ones under that scratched out markings or whatever it was in the hallway we passed. Yes, you are perhaps right. And I, uh, I try to scuffle through to take the lead of the party going down. Indeed you do, and all of the three of you begin to rampage down the stairs, moving as fast as you can. The sounds of shrieking, laughter, battle, are getting further behind. Although you do notice the clanging sound isn't getting much further away. Still, 
After a few flights down, you suddenly find yourself in a chamber, currently dark. Esmeralda whips out a torch and begins to look around, looking concerned. I... I am not sure where we are now. You, however, Roshek, smell a very familiar smell. The smell of bones. <sighs> this is definitely the catacombs. <sighs> the catacombs. There was supposed to be something for me here. I... Uh, Start making my way forward carefully, using my dark vision to squint at the corners. My sword has now retreated back into its scabbard. Moving forward, you open two doors in front of you and actually find a very familiar sight. You perhaps have misjudged where you are. These are not the catacombs, but they are the Chamber of Bones, where you found the dragon skull. Right. Right, this is where we were led by that little thing. I look around, trying to see if he is still around here, if we are alone in this chamber. Hard to tell right now, he's definitely not in the chamber. Esmeralda brings her torch in, remarking, I have not been here, but I do know where we are. I believe, we believed, she pauses, we, Van Richten believed that the catacombs were close to the dungeons, and the dungeons we went past a sort of hourglass room. Do you think you know where to go to get to that place? Uh, well, we passed through it, I think, coming from the stairs, and there was a trap of some sort there that didn't activate, I uh, say, warily. Um, and I move out towards the door that we came from when we originally entered this room. That would be the eastern door, and you poke it open, and once again in the dark see that long corridor, the corridor that then, yes, to the south led to that potentially trapped hallway. And Roman, perhaps at this point you'll remember that your original route through here involved going through the bone chamber to the north. That led to that office? And the office had that secret passageway. Yes. Do you remember our journey down here last time, Roshek? Yeah, we came from here, I say, and I look out into the hallway. We went through one of these doors, it must have been that one. And I point at the ones to the north. I think that's where we fought off that shadowy creature. Hmm. Indeed. Which would mean that where we need to go is... I'm going to start thinking about this. Well, that's... that's led us downwards, didn't it? That's what led us to the portal chamber. Yes. If we continue going downwards, surely there's an adjacent chamber to that room where... Well, I don't know, the catacombs would be. I wouldn't surprise if it's even more down than that. That sounds very reasonable. Let us pursue that course of action, then. Right. Just as you're about to do this, Roshek, you turn to give a final look to that corridor and see a bit of lantern light suddenly appearing at the very far end. What do you do? I call out. Oi, creature, is that you? The lantern jiggles about a bit, and immediately you hear this. Ah, they are here! They are here! Ah, ah, down here! Down here! The beasts! The pests! Kill them! Kill them! And this thing is shouting very loudly, summoning things to you. What do you do? I withdraw back into the room, close the door. Quickly, we must move. Yes, let's. Esmeralda nods and leads the way forwards, kicking down the doors in front of you. Very quickly, you are able to remember where you're going. The hallway leading to the little office. You ignore the east. All around you, you can hear from far off the echoes of skitterings and scratchings and laughter and things coming down from who knows where. You also once again, Roman, hear the clattering of thudding footsteps very close behind you. You find your way back to that office, though, and immediately find the secret door that leads down. What do you do? Mm, then follow it down. Down we must go. That is the only way. And you go down the spiral staircase, long and dark, 
but quickly moving. Everything seems a little further away now, except that clanging. It sounds so constant. Dun, dun, dun. Still, you are back in the portal chamber. The hourglass is there, those braziers, the weird little things you could put into it to make it work. And you again see, as well as the staircase you've just come down from, a large set of doors in that wall as well, made of stone, and another set of stairs that seem to go up, and that red curtain. Hmm. That's where you came from, isn't it? And I turn to Esmeralda. Esmeralda steps forward and nods, pointing to the curtain. Yes, that is right. The dungeons are through there. This is a viewing platform, if you will, for his torture chamber. We believe, she points to the stone doors, this could be the way to the catacombs. Very well. And I move to push them open. And I move to help out. I say to Esmeralda, can you make some sort of... Can you try to make it look like we went another way? Esmeralda shakes her head. There is not enough time. We do not have anything that could create a false trail, and they probably know where we're going. However, however, she steps through the gateway and nods to you two. If you two go on ahead for just a moment, this will only take me a minute. I can do one more circle. It might stop some things coming through, at least for an hour. Hopefully that's all we'll need. It will make a difference. Make sure you catch up after you're done, and I take the lead again. Yes, yes, sister. We will come out of this alive. Remember that. She nods, resolute now, if perhaps something in her eyes pained. But only you, of course, notice that, Roman, with your excellent insight. She already begins to kneel down and start drawing once again a circle like she did up above, inscribing runes and using the last of a bottle of holy water to inscribe it with power. You two, on the other hand, begin moving down a long, dark corridor that's ever so slowly descending downwards. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the campaign Curse of Strahd for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Curse of Strahd was designed by Christopher Perkins and based on the adventure Ravenloft, written by Tracy and Laura Hickman in 1983. Dungeons and Dragons is published by Wizards of the Coast. The music is created by Metatron Omega, Flowers for Body Snatchers and Word Clock and is used with permission from their label Cryochamber. Visit cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for more tasty dark ambient. A new episode of Red Moon Roleplaying is released every Friday. Please like our Facebook page and give us feedback, comments and input there. You can also visit us at redmoonroleplaying.com. Finally, a huge thank you to our growing base of supporters. You are truly amazing and inspire us so much to keep going with the show. If you haven't yet found us on Patreon, please have a look at the links in the description and see if you want to show your appreciation and encourage our work with the show there. While the show will always be free of charge to our listeners, Patreon supporters have access to extra material such as our bonus Q&A podcast, Ask for the Moon, where we discuss all topics and questions our Patreons have for us. You can even get access to the full-length, raw and unedited versions of our gaming sessions way before they are released as finished episodes. Thank you for listening. Looking forward to meeting again next week.